So how are you doing, Ella? I am doing pretty fucking fantastically. That's the right adverb, right? Awesome. How has uh, how is the expo been treating you? The expo's been so good for me. It's been super busy. I've been doing lots of things. I've been doing lots of press. I've been signing. I've been selling coloring books. I have these really cool coloring books. They're like porno coloring books that my friends drew pictures of me and I made a thing. It's a cool thing. Um, I've been just doing all the stuff. It's crazy. It's actually one of my best AVNs yet. I'm excited about the coloring books. I'm going to have to pass by to check them out. Yeah, I'll be at my booth in a couple hours. You should totally come grab one. Yeah. So, uh, what made you decide to get into the industry? So, I was a librarian, and I had graduated really young. I got my master's degree when I was 21. So, when I got my, uh, when I started working as a reference librarian, I had nothing but free time because it was like, wow, not taking a million classes and working three jobs tends to give me more time to do whatever the fuck I want. So, I answered a Craigslist ad about this really hardcore bondage, non nude, kind of kind of scary for me but an adventure so I responded and I did it and I had a great fucking time and uh, it paid more than more in an hour than I made in a day for the job that I got a master's degree to do so I started doing that a little bit and then I was like you know I could probably move to Los Angeles if I can get this kind of work in Massachusetts if I move to Los Angeles where that's that shit flourishes I could totally do this for a living if I wanted to and um, you know I was a librarian I was 22 it was the job I wanted to do for the rest of my life but I didn't want the rest of my life to start when I was 22 so I was like fuck it YOLO I'm gonna move to California I'm gonna do some porno and I'm gonna get married and I'm gonna have fun and it's gonna be awesome and uh, doing porno was a great idea getting married was not I've been doing porn for a little over five years now um, I guess my first, the softcore bondage stuff that I was telling you about, it's almost six years. But um, my fr I consider my first porn scene uh, a scene for fucking machines at kink.com. It was my first, like, this is really porno. Porno, porno, porno. So, that was October. How have you noticed the industry change from when you started to now? From when I started to now, I noticed that the typical um, career span for performers has gotten considerably shorter. It used to be like, Girls would be in for about like a year, maybe a year and a half was, or maybe like nine, nine months to a year seemed to be standard, and now it seems to be like three months maybe. Like they come and go so fast. Yeah, and um, and then you've got lifers like me, but um, also the the pay rates have gone down because of the tube sites, which is a bummer. But I also noticed that. Uh, maybe this is just because I wasn't as aware of it at the time, but I feel like performers are actually gaining a lot of uh, a lot of power in terms of um, working on the other, other side of the camera, starting their own production companies, doing their own shit, directing. I feel like there's a lot more opportunities available for people in the industry. So that's kind of cool. Right. Uh, what projects have you been up to? I, my big project right now is a website called vrtube.xxx. And it's a porn site that we're making um, virtual reality porn for something called the Oculus Rift and other virtual reality headset devices. But um, basically it's like a thing you put on your face and you can look around and it's entirely immersive. There's like you're in a room that uh, my business partner constructed and coded and made and it's really cool. And we're shooting girls. Um, actually right now we're shooting girls. And you'll be able to see this girl in this room watching her do her thing and it's fucking incredible. It's really cool. It, yeah. That's, that's right. I am interviewing for a website called Crave Online, and um, I got to do the same thing last year. They hired me again to do red carpet interviews, and it's going to be really cool. I really love Crave Online. They're a really great company. I, um, I became aware of them through a friend who works for them, and it's just so many great people, and I love it, and I'm happy to do that. I'm jazzed. For me, it's that I'll be standing in this crowd of like other media people, and the girls will be like, oh, okay, oh, oh my god, how's it going, girl? So it's like getting to see my friends like on the red carpet, and it's like, I, I describe AVN as like porno summer camp, and then like the, or AEE, -E, AEE, -E, the Adult Entertainment Expo is porno summer camp, and the AVN awards are like porn prom. So it's like, it's very much like being in high school, going to prom, and it's like, oh my god, your dress is so pretty, your makeup, your hair, oh my god, I love you so much, you know, like, I love that, and like, none of the other people on the red carpet really have that, because they're not performers, they haven't fucked these people, they haven't worked with these people, they're not their peers, but I'm their peer, we're contemporaries, we do the same shit, and I love that.
it makes me feel extra special and it makes me feel really good being able to give my friends this opportunity to like do a press thing and promote themselves and I just fucking love it you know what are your favorite type of scenes my favorite types of scenes I love doing girl girl I love doing like lesbian porn not just girl girl porn where it's like two hot girls who really don't give a shit but like two girls who love pussy who want to fuck each other and like especially I tend to be a performer that people pair with new girls um, I've been called a scene saver because they can put me with a girl who doesn't really who hasn't come into herself yet let's say or who isn't fully uh, adapted to porn and I can get a good scene out of her because I really love fucking women and I'm really good with people and the girls feel comfortable with me and they feel comfortable just like letting go a lot of the times they hold on to this idea of what a porn scene is supposed to be so they'll fake the whole time and they won't let themselves be immersed in it and I'm really good at pulling people out of that headspace and just making them let me fuck them what's the secret to uh, pleasuring a woman? give a shit just give a shit and learn about it and listen to them. It's not about your ego. And if she doesn't have a crescendo of a fucking crashing orgasm, that's okay. Like, don't, don't lighten the experience with expectations. Just give and be a good partner and that's all you have to do. Although I did start doing boy girl scenes lately and I really like doing boy girl a lot now also. I really like it. So who are you some of your favorite performers? Oh, that's so. That's such an unfair question, and you know it is. That's not fair. Um, okay, Violet Monroe, Violet Monroe, Sin Sage, Sovereign Sire. Um, I love working with Tanya Tate. Um, April O'Neil. Um, Annie Cruz is my roommate. We haven't actually done a scene together, but I really want to. She and I have good chemistry just because we live together. Um, I don't know, a, a lot. There's so many. And I know I'm leaving people out and I feel like a shithead for it. And in terms of dudes, um, I honestly haven't worked with that many dudes. I love working with Marcus London. He is just so divine. And he's such a nice person. Like, he's just a really nice guy. I actually like hang out with him off camera. Um, same with Wolf Hudson. Wolf was my first boy-girl scene. He was one of the first people I met in the industry. He's super good friends with me and my roommate. Like, getting to work with him was like it felt so comfortable and so special because it's someone I actually like. Same with Richie Calhoun. Love that motherfucker. He's awesome. Uh, Mike Rosano. Sorry. Well, since you bring it up, how was your first boy girl? You know, it was a little painful. It was uh, early in the morning and I wasn't feeling my best, but the director totally was kind and he gave me a back rub and he gave me a little pep talk and he was like, hey, look, you got this. It's fine. You're going to get in there. You fucked men before. It's not, you're fine. You got this. And I was like, yeah, coach, I got this. All right, I'm gonna do it. And I did it, and they actually, they liked it. And then I did my next boy girl scene the very next day with Anthony Rosano, and that was for The Room parody by Wood Rocket. Fucking hilarious, loved it. I just, I've had such good experiences. There isn't really anyone, at least in boy girl, who I've worked with, who I was like, oh, well, I regret that. I wish I didn't do that. Like, it's every single time it's been really cool. Star Wars at that and stuff, so are you a geek? Am I a geek? Well, just tell me some of your favorite geeky stuff. I have the fucking Dewey Decimal number for Harry Potter tattooed on my back. That is awesome. That I had to know that. I have a quote by Elvis Dumbledore tattooed on my thigh. Alright, that is true geek cred right there. I have a goddamn zombie girl on my leg. Yeah, I'm a fucking geek. I'm actually on a panel today. Um, it's uh, about being a performer at Comic Con. So I'm going to be doing that with Tanya Tate, Nikki Hunter, Annie Cruz, and April O'Neil, and maybe someone else. And I'm an asshole if I forgot someone on the panel. And I apologize. And I love you, girl. You know I do if I forgot your name. Anyway, uh, that's going to be cool. I'm actually going to dress up as Batgirl. As soon as we're done here, I'm going to go get into my Batgirl costume. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, I wore my Darth Vader dress. I did another cosplay uh, panel or seminar on Wednesday night at ABN, and um, I was wearing my little Darth Vader dress. It's awesome, and I'm a Slytherin, and I'm Sith, and I'm, I like, I like the evil, the evil sides, typically. I think they're way more interesting and exciting. When did you start cosplaying? I started cosplaying when I was, I want to say like 18, um, maybe younger. Way before porn. Yeah, I didn't actually 
I, it took me a while to incorporate my cosplay into porn because I didn't want to like sully it. I didn't want it to be like, I don't want to be pandering. I don't want to pander to the geek fandom because they can see right through that. I mean, I am genuinely a geek and I think that people appreciate that. And if I'm just honest, I think honesty is the key. You know, like I play D&D with my porno friends in Los Angeles. It's awesome. I have a, a half elf rogue who is uh, level 10. I'm level 10 now. I know, pretty hardcore. Um, but yeah, it's like, but I'm not a gamer gamer. Like, I don't play video games. I feel like girls who try to market themselves, or people who try to market themselves as, like, total geek whatever, they try to embrace every aspect of it, and it tends to be a little, uh, I don't know, insincere, you know? I feel like the key to being a geek, like, being a porn star who is a geek and allowing that to be part of your porn identity is to just be incredibly genuine about it and don't pander to people and don't fake shit. Just be you. And people appreciate that, you know? I am. I am excited. I'm hesitantly excited. I can't help but be excited, but also, here's the thing, like, George Lucas isn't involved as much, and I have faith in J.J. Abrams. I have more faith in J.J. Abrams than I do in George Lucas, and that is so fucking sad, but I do. It'll be fine. Here's the thing. Um, I feel this way about the new Star Wars. I feel the same way about my favorite books being made into movies. The original content still exists on, well, I would say the original content still exists unmolested the way it is with books, but George Lucas decided to fuck with the original content, so thanks, George Lucas. But basically, like, it's all just really expensive fan fiction. Like, this is just some shitty fan fiction. I'm not going to go on fanfiction.net and read some fucking 14-year-old shitty slash fiction and let it taint the way that I see the entire fandom. Like, just because some asshole has a couple billion dollars to throw into a movie doesn't make it anything more than just expensive fan fiction. So, like, like when my favorite books get made into shitty movies, it's okay. It's okay. Because the book is still there. It still exists. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I just got to repeat that. It's my mantra. It's fine. It's all fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, check out vrtube.xxx. Uh, check me out on Twitter. I'm at E-L-A Darling. Ella Darling. And same on Instagram and Facebook and Tumblr and all the other bullshit. Um, my website is darlingella.com. And my other website is vrtube. Like tube steak. <laughs> dot xxx. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I adore you.